I've talked in depth about the current gender war and the TQ plus agenda quite a bit, yet rarely do I zoom in on specific individuals that spread falsehoods like women have bulges. Starting today, that will be changing. And guess what? Nobody is safe. So let's hone in on the man that started the rumor itself. Can women have bulges? Well. I'd like all of the biological women in the room to be quiet because Dylan Mulvaney has the answer. Normalize the bulge. We are normalizing the bulge. Not only does he have the answer, but he has the full blueprint in the form of song on how exactly to be a girl. And we'll be going through all of that today. And to Dylan, I'd like to say, Dylan, this group may be able to applaud you for being a basic bitch, but most people can see you for exactly who you are. Dylan Mulvaney is just a mediocre gay male who added trans to their bio for relevancy. Before we talk about the song, let's talk about Dylan. A lot of people don't know that before Dylan was making waves for his heavily auto-tuned voice, these are the days, these are the days. he was a musical theater major. And you wouldn't know that because he was very average at it. Some might say basic, but it happened. I am 16, going on 17, innocent as a Unfortunately, being your typical gay young actor didn't work out because it's most of the industry. So you either need to have a connection or have something really special about you, which unfortunately Dylan does not. So what do you do when you're almost 30 years old, you have a failed musical theater career, and the world now sees you as just another boring gay male? You dress like a woman and you start documenting the outrageous claim of being a girl daily. And so he did. Day one of being a girl, and I have already cried three times. I wrote a scathing email that I did not send. I ordered dresses online that I couldn't afford. And then uh, when someone asked me how I was, I said, I'm fine, when I wasn't fine. How'd I do, ladies? Good? Day three of being a girl, and I've already become a bimbo. We shop. It's been an amazing day as a bimbo. I think it's a good fit for me. What do you think, ladies? Day four of being a girl, and I am exhausted. The hair, the makeup, the clothes, the high heels. It's a lot to keep up with, and I need to learn early on that those things do not make me a girl. It's what's in here that matters. Thursday had a walk of shame. And I actually didn't shave my face today because I was like, Dill, even with your facial hair, you're a girl. Somewhere down this road, I know someone's waiting here. Some dreams just can't be wrong. Well, but being a girl, and I just picked up some tampons, and they were all staring directly at my crotch. And I went, oh, I forgot that my crotch doesn't look like other women's crotches sometimes because mine doesn't look like a little Barbie pocket. Or number three, I just normalize it. And I wear clothes like this and we all just normalize women having bulges sometimes because we're coming up on bikini season, baby. And you might see a bulge or two. So normalize the bulge. We are normalizing the bulge. But before that, Dylan was just your average gay theater kid. You get to spin the wheel. Yeah, you get to spin the wheel. But guess what? You get a second chance in this game first. No way. Oh yes. my God. Oh my God. I'm still in it. So you know. It
Now, does this not register to you as someone who has been seeking fame and notoriety their whole life, a desperate theater kid who just grew up loving Kristen Chenoweth, a gay boy who had to become something like a woman to somehow be special in today's society, special in his field of entertainment. Dylan received a lot of backlash for calling himself a girl. Why? Again, because he's almost 30, and girl is a term used to describe a female child. At least try calling yourself a woman, not infantilizing yourself, because it's weird and it's creepy. It's giving grooming, grooming that's easily possible on a site like TikTok, where Dylan is known for posting. Instead of Dylan moving away from the term girl, he doubled down with the song. So let's get into it. Days of girlhood. Now, first of all, you ask yourself, what does a grown ass man know about being a girl? Well, look no further than the lyrics. What do the days of girlhood include? Let's go through it together. Now, I would show you a clip, but I refuse to get this video copyrighted over such a terrible song, both in message and in sound. Verse one, we get our first set of instructions. So for all of you non-biological women, take notes. Verse one, ring the, <laughs> ring the alarms immediately. We have a code pink emergency. Okay, stereotype one, pink immediately. Okay. Calling women of all ages. Girls like me gotta learn the basics. Last look. Quick change. Sip champagne. Playing catch up because we missed the pregame. Pull up the group chat. Where you at? Drop a pin. We're doing hot. Really? We're doing hot girl shit get in and you're like okay well it's not so bad it sounds like a Kim Petra song it's not too bad it's just giving very bubblegum pop but then we get into the pre-chorus and well we got our first set of real instructions Monday can't get out of bed Tuesday pick up meds Wednesday retail therapy Cash or credit, I say yes. Thursday, had a walk of shame. Didn't even know his name. Weekends are great for kissing friends. Weekends are for kissing friends. Friday night, I'll overspend. Saturday, we flirt for drinks. Playing wingman to our twinks. Sunday, the Twilight soundtrack. Cues my breakdown in the bath. So right off the bat, um, the implication here is very clear because he quite literally spends a whole f***ing stanza of pre-chorus, a verse, whatever the f*** you want to call it. He quite literally spends a whole section talking about the fact that the weekend is just just for being a slut. <laughs> we're just we're just taking the weekends to be a whore. And then you end the weekend by being a crying mess to Twilight because duh, all my girls out there, I mean, in the soundtrack, in the background as we speak, of course. Um and then we go into playing wingman for our twinks. First of all, what twinks? Because most of the people that you surround yourself with were twinks. Now they're thems. So what twinks? So already we have multiple stereotypes just jam packed into one little section. And you're like, it couldn't possibly get any worse. It does. Verse two. Hot girls to front of the line. Linked arms. No stress because we're dressed up to the nines. Mini skirt. It's below my hips, dye my hair blonde, pillow talk on my lips. Boys on the dance floor, it's finally clear. The patriarchy is over, you can hold my beer. Back at home, we replay the breakup, stay up all night, f 
fall asleep in our makeup. Mom brought me into the world. Sister taught me how to girl. Best friend coached me how to text. The boy toy that I'm dating next. Girls who helped show me the way. They're why I'm an it girl today. I just want to say... If the women around you are guiding you to do shit like this, first of all, to all my ladies out there, I know that none of you would go to sleep with your makeup on. Rarely does that ever happen. I've been around, I'm gay, I've been around girls enough to know that. Not really a thing. You take your makeup off before you go to bed. So already then and there, you're failing at being a girl. That's not a thing. I also don't know how comfortable or how like grateful but light would be about you talking about beer when you single-handedly have destroyed their company you're quite literally known for destroying their company no one really gives a shit about bud light anymore so there's a whole chorus to this song which if you want to go ahead and put yourself through that you can go ahead and do that on your own time we're not going to do that around here for copyright reasons and for eardrum reasons but Already, we have quite a lot of information here. So I hope you were taking notes on how to properly be a girl because I know I was. So summed up, being a girl is not being able to get out of bed, popping prescription pills, retail therapy, the walk of shame, not remembering who you hook up with, who you hook, not that, not remembering who you hook up with, overspending, flirting for drinks, Listening to the Twilight soundtrack. First of all, if you're a real girly, you're listening to the Hunger Games soundtrack, but whatever. And having a mental a meltdown in the bathtub. Now, to my girls, a huge percentage of my audience being female. Do you feel seen by this? Is, is any of this usual for you? Do you do this on the day-to-day? Do you uh, pop prescription pills on the daily? Are you always doing the walk of shame? Do you have a hard time remembering who you hook up with? Maybe, do any of those maybe ring a bell? How about possibly having a meltdown in the bathtub? Flirting for drinks, maybe? Being a slut at a bar just to get free food? Do you feel okay with being portrayed as a pill-popping slut with mental health problems? especially the slut part. Modern feminism has given us the slut walk to combat slut shaming, only for us to come full circle and have a man in a dress attribute being a slut only to women and girls, specifically girls in his case. This is an individual that has infantilized himself for attention for a career, a man that has made a career out of taking stereotypes of women and using them to act like he fulfills the role of being a woman. As you've seen, he quite literally glorifies just the stereotypes. To a person with common sense, I ask you, I did a video last week, I believe, I think two weeks ago, about me identifying as a black non-binary lesbian. Go watch that video for more info if you're questioning what I just said. But in that video, I talked about the fact that our culture has become very comfortable accepting and not questioning something like this, an individual who takes all the stereotypes of a group and then uses them to act like he fulfills being part of that group In that video that I did, saying that I was a black non-binary lesbian, if I all of a sudden take stereotypes of black people, I start eating a bunch of fried chicken, I start eating a bunch of watermelon, I start talking about, I don't know, I, I literally don't know any other fucking stereotypes, I start just gathering a bunch of stereotypes. And I'm like, oh well, I'm black now, I eat a lot of watermelon and chicken. How does that sound to you? Does that sound offensive? Because it should. It sounds offensive because it should be offensive because it is offensive. So do you see it? Do you see it? Do you see what I see? This is a misogynist in a dress. And if you don't believe me, 
Don't take my word for it. Take his. Day three of being a girl and I've already become a bimbo. The bimbos yeah. are bimboing. Again, as a female, do you relate to any of that? Or is the glorification of being a whore who pops pills upsetting to you? Girls, he is mocking you. They are mocking you. And that isn't they as in them. That's they as in men like Dylan who get away with doing woman face, who get away with making a mockery of our mothers, our sisters, our best friends. A person who acts like women can't be out in nature as if some of the world's greatest athletes aren't women. When you pretend to be black, the world makes fun of you, calls you a racist. Just ask Rachel Dolezal, see how well that went for her. Or ask Ilaria Baldwin, Alec Baldwin's wife, who lied about being a Spaniard, going as far as adopting a fake Spanish accent and purposely forgetting how to pronounce English words like cucumber. We have very few ingredients. We have tomatoes. We have, um, a, how do you say it? Cucumber? Cucumbers. We have um, red pepper. We have, of course... Only to find out that her name is actually Hillary Lynn Hayward Thomas, and she's from Boston, Massachusetts. It could not get more American. But pretend to be a girl, and your career will take off. And people will just applaud you for being trans. Rachel Dolezal goes on The View and gets ripped apart by the co-hosts. Rightfully so. But Dylan Mulvaney gets an honorary photo with Lady Gaga on International Women's Day. That's right. A biological male who calls himself a girl is who we should be celebrating on such a day. On a day that was created to honor the women of the world. The women of the world who in some countries sacrifice their lives to even show their shoulders at the beach. A normal person would read this post and be upset by how ignorant it is. Forget women like Malala who got shot in the fucking face for trying to get an education. Forget the women of Afghanistan that have lost all of their rights. Our culture attacks white privileged men so much. Everything is blamed on white supremacy or the patriarchy. Everything is blamed on the decisions of rich, white, straight men. So much so that even artists like Kesha have made songs about the subject. What if rich, white, straight men didn't rule the world anymore? We've come full circle. All your efforts to make everything equal and accept absolutely everything without any questions have brought us to this exact point. Making space for a privileged white male who dresses like a woman. Because apparently... All it takes to be a woman is a bathing suit from Forever 21. So when Lady Gaga got wind that people were dragging her for this post, her response was interesting. I'll read it to you. It's appalling to me that a post about National Women's Day by Dylan Mulvaney and me would be met with such vitriol and hatred. When I see a newspaper reporting on hatred but calling it backlash, I feel it is important to clarify that hatred is hatred. And this kind of hatred is violence. Backlash would imply that people who love or respect Dylan and me didn't like something we did. This is not backlash, this is hatred. I feel very protective in this moment, not only of Dylan, 
but of the trans community who continues to lead the way with their endless grace and inspiration in the face of constant degradation, intolerance, and physical, verbal, and mental violence. I certainly do not speak for this community. Of course, girl, don't want to get canceled. But I have something to say. I hope all women will come together to honor us all, capitalized, for International Women's Day. And may we do that always until the day, capitalized, that all women are celebrated equally. That all people are celebrated equally. A day where people of all gender identities are celebrated on whichever holiday speaks to them. Because people of all gender, of all gender identities and race deserve peace and dignity. They do, but so do women on International Women's Day. Again, ladies, please stop supporting this buffoonery because soon enough, even I will be celebrated on International Women's Day. Dylan Mulvaney is an embarrassment to those that actually suffer with gender dysphoria. Trans women with real gender dysphoria do not embrace the bulge. They do everything in their power to make it invisible so that nobody notices because the intention for them is to try to blend in. Transgender women with real gender dysphoria do not try to claim International Women's Day. Trans people have quite a few days out of the year. Let's count them so you can see just exactly how many days are allotted for one minority group. Transgender Day of Visibility on March 31st. Pride Month, an entire month. The entire month of November for Trans Awareness Month. Transparent Day on November 5th. Trans Awareness Week between November 13th through the 19th. And Transgender Day of Remembrance on November 20th. So y'all are saying that you need more. You have 70 combined calendar days out of the year and you're saying you want more. Biological women can't just have one day? Is that where we are as a society? Where the so-called patriarchy is infiltrating from the inside? Last week I did a video on Rachel Dolezal and how the world treated her for pretending to be black. And compared to the life of Dylan Mulvaney, it's safe to say it's very interesting. Apparently, Rachel was onto something when she transformed herself. She just needed to turn herself into a trans man to actually be taken seriously. A grown-ass man calling himself a girl should have been a red flag on day of girlhood number one. I've said this before, and I'll say it again. If we lose sight of what a woman is, then how is it possible for us to fight for women's rights? Doesn't really make any sense. To all of you who consider yourself die-hard feminists, there was a time where even drag queens were being ridiculed for mocking women. Now, arguments can be made for both sides of that conversation, but regardless of what your opinion is on that subject, this man is actually outwardly mocking women. Like, explicitly. To him, you're just a pill-popping slut with mental health issues. That's giving girl power to you? That's giving I stand with y'all to you? Common sense needs to become more common. Or next year, I want a cake for International Women's Day. All right. And before I wrap this up, I have a very special announcement. It's always been my intention to use this channel to spread the truth and give you real, true, factual information that you won't see coming from your mainstream media hosts. And as this channel grows and more resources are poured into the creation of content, that will become more apparent to you. With that being said, I am very proud to announce that I have officially joined the Gays Against Groomers organization as a content creator 
and a chapter member for the state of Florida. Gays Against Groomers is a nonprofit organization against the sterilization and indoctrination of children. The organization was actually created in response to the ongoing gender and LGBT debates in America. Giving me a like after watching a video is great, but making your voice heard during all of this craziness is going to be a lot more worthwhile. So definitely go give them a follow. We are the future. Our children are the future. And it is our responsibility to responsibly guide the youth. With that being said, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you made it this far. I have been talking for a very long time already, so I'm going to sign off. I will see you on the next one.